Hey listeners, did you know that Yogi Triathlete offers endurance coaching for body and mind? We offer personalized training plans for endurance sports, wellness and mindset, nutrition and recovery guidance, and race preparation and strategy, all within the supportive community of Team Yogi Triathlete. So if you're ready to conquer your fitness goals and push your limits, our endurance coaches are ready to guide you on the journey to peak performance. Go to yogitriathlete.com today to set up your free 30-minute discovery call and embrace a future of strength, stamina, and achievement. Your goals, our experience, the perfect match for unstoppable success. More often than not, the things you don't want to do are the things that you should probably pursue. We're really firm on our belief system. And a belief is just a thought we think about a lot. That's all over and over again. So if we begin to question a belief, wouldn't that open the window to other possibilities? Yeah. Don't ever give up. You know, I've literally had moments <laughs> recently in my journal where I've just written like don't like over and over again, like don't give up just, don't give up, don't give up. Like keep going, don't give up, don't give up. Don't whether, whether that's an 8-hour meditation, whether that's launching something new into the world, whether that's making a change that I want to make in my life, like don't ever give up. Welcome to the Yogi Triathlete Podcast and the January 2024 O Show. It's January 1st. I'm here with Beach and uh, we're setting off the season. It's here. <laughs> it is so here. 2024, day one, everything changes. Everything changes. Well, there's a lot of energy of change right now that's available. I know. So it's know. easy to start. It's, you know, it's staying with it. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day who's starting a big cleanse today, and they do it every year. And they said, well, this year, you know, it's like, I, I got to just keep doing it so it becomes like a lifestyle. Like, it can't just be a month a year. It needs to be a lifestyle. I'm like, right, and bridging... Bridging that gap between those two things is just doing it every day. And not, and I also think like not making such a big deal out of it. Like wellness shouldn't be like a surprise and like something where, um, you know, like, like it's a miracle. It's, it's, it is our birthright and we're going to stumble upon a lot of things in life that are, we're going to find ourselves in states of dis-ease, but there's so much of our own wellness that we can control just by um, what we decide when our eyes open in the morning. And paying attention, more paying attention. You know, it's not, it's not, um, it's not in the. I've got this program or this up level to do in 2024 that becomes the the challenge. It's what happens on day 12. When you meet the resistance head on, do you fall back to the routine that you've practiced for years or do you decide to commit to whatever challenge it is that you're focused on? That to me is more important than any type of challenge. It's are you present and awake to that moment when change is delivered up for you to make make change happen? That's it. That's, that's the really critical moment in all of this day 12 day 13 day 14 probably not before then probably not after that who knows i think it's just being awake to those that moment yeah yeah how, so how are we awake to that moment well you got to train the mind you got to train the mind so the, the the foundation is a well-trained mind to be able to make the change that you desire Otherwise, it will continue to fall back on what it does best, wander from thought to thought to something else that's happening, um, a habit that we've built. And then it gets really challenging to get off of that. And then we find ourselves thinking, well, I'll just wait till 2025. <laughs> uh, I think one of the coolest things about awareness um, is that you also have this awareness of like that part of you that's like, no, and it's not really using these words saying like, no, just stay the same. But it uses other words that come through as like truth. And it's like so easy just to do it. But I think that's a really cool piece of awareness is that you also are aware of, of that voice. And, uh, it's, I don't think it's easy to make change at no, all. It's hard. Um, 
but it, it it is a simple application. It's just, but it's, it's difficult. It's very difficult. Like we were talking before we started recording today, like it, there's a collective mindset. It's not just like, yes, it's your history. Yes, it's what you've practiced, all of that. But there's like a collective mindset, you know, that leans towards the negative and just the evolution of how our brains have developed and how they react to positive versus negative things in life. So, um, you know, don't underestimate it, but also never give up. Yeah. And what is your theme or what is your one thing that you would yeah, want if people I had, to hear? If I had one, one thing, it's just like, it's never give up, like just never give up. Um, and it's the, I just wrote about this in Awake Athlete. It, it takes two things really to see something through and it's devotion and technique and meditator Bob has taught us this. That's it. It's two things. And that devotion is like the don't ever give up. And it, it, it offers this like emotional application to the process of your life that is, it's almost like the jet fuel for it, you know? Um, and then there's the technique, like the action steps, or if it's meditation, it's like the breath work, whatever, whatever the technique is. But then also it's like when you're in the technique, like being devoted to that technique. So it's devotion in technique um, as well. It's not just devotion and technique. You got to have both of those, but never, but never ever give up. And um, it reminds me of these, one of my favorite writings from Swami Satchidananda, who um, was our teacher's teacher. Um, And he was, uh, he was a spiritual leader from India, a yogi, a yogi, taught yoga, and opened, was the founder of um, Yogaville in Virginia, but also people may be familiar with the Integral Yoga Center in New York City, uh, which is an OG yoga center, and he was also the, um, the founder of that. But I'm going to read it, because I have it right here. And I think it just describes like what it takes. Let nothing shake you. You have to be really bold and strong to achieve anything in life. Be that bold. When you know that something is right, don't hesitate to follow it. Certainly, there may be obstacles, tests, but don't give up. Even if you should fall down or make a mistake, get up and say, no, next time I'll be strong. Keep on going like great mountain climbers until you reach the top. If you really want to do it, you'll be given the needed strength. You will have all the support. If you want it, you've got it, but your want has to be that strong. So you have to have the strongest want in what you want. (laughs) So you can't give up on that want and expect other forces to intervene and, and take the lead. So just don't ever give up. You know, I've literally had moments recently in my journal where I've just written like, don't like over and over again, like don't give up, just don't give up don't give up, like keep going, don't give up, don't give up, don't, whether whether that's an eight hour meditation, whether that's launching something new into the world, whether that's making a change that I want to make in my life, like don't ever give up. So that would be my, my, um, my thing for 2024, my message. I was just smiling over here because it it reminded me your devotion of your decision yesterday to do your long ride in inside here because it was raining and you decided to do it with the with the information that your brother who was in town would possibly or possibly not <laughs> call you to come over or hang out at a at a specific time so you didn't wait to hear from him as to what the plan was you said well they got to check out at 10 so I better get on my 3 hour ride early and then if they choose, if they so choose to do so, then I will go hang with them. If they don't contact me or check in, then I know I have some free time. I'm not going to set myself up and, and push the ride till I have to make a decision if I'm only going to do part of it because I'm going to go meet my brother. So you already decided early on, you're like, I'm going to get up early, going to get the ride in, and then I'll be ready when they make a decision. Yeah, I was really tired yesterday morning too. And that alarm went off at five, but I was like, get up and get it done because they had to check out at 10 and I knew if I got on at seven, I'd be doing really well to get my three hour ride in. And then I'd have the whole day free to do whatever. I mean, they were probably going to be at a bar watching the Patriots game, which they were. And I took Clark for a walk down there, but it was just, 
Yeah. I mean, it was kind of a non-negotiable, right? Like we had talked about it in the last show. It's bike camp. So it comes before everything. Um, and yeah, I mean, to, to have my brother in town and to think for one second that, that pushing it until later would be smart. Um, I didn't even entertain it. I, it was like the only option was just to get up and get it done. Um, yeah, it's a good ride. Yeah. Well, that's what it takes. And then feel super good and like go out on New Year's Eve day and, and, uh, and be like, yeah, I just got a three hour ride in. Like I feel vibrant and good and. Yeah, there's something to getting that session done in the morning. We've talked about that. And then knowing like I could go to bed at 8, 8 p.m. Right. on New Year's Eve and not get hassled for it. It was so much easier to wake up in the morning. Uh, all right. Well, would you be your one piece of advice leading into 2024? Advice or uh, whatever word you want to use for it. What well, you, knowledge would you like to share? You took the, the best one. Never give up. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really good. I think but that's the end game. It is. It is. And that, that just shows, it's an example that you believe in yourself, you know, that you, that you can do challenging things or do big things. Like don't give up, just don't give up. I think to piggyback that, I would say seek uh, living life in the possibility and curiosity versus the lack and the constraints. Meaning, you know, you've you've created through your lifetime a nice box of safetyism, of comfort, of experiences, and you've now locked them into that box and said, okay, this is a great place to live from. I'm comfortable here. Um, And anything outside of it is something I don't like or I don't want to do or or I have no desire. And it shuts down a lot of, uh, a lot of potential experiences that you can have to grow and get even more expansive in your life. And, and we do that way too much, myself included, until we begin to shift and focus on every opportunity that comes up and we notice that we're feeding the lack or feeding the comfort, we actually choose, well, maybe I'll go check that out. Maybe I'll go have an experience. And maybe you won't be as successful. Maybe you will. But being okay with being unsuccessful, but having the experience. And now whatever that is that's out there that was having this power over you because you didn't want to do it, now it doesn't have as much power. It's actually um, can turn into something you quite are passionate about or love. Can you give an example from your own life? Because mm. you're talking about seeing the possibilities, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what was I really hesitant to? Yoga, I guess yoga. Like I didn't want to do yoga. Um, Why didn't you want to do yoga? I don't know, just because it was in a studio. It wasn't like a real workout. Um, <laughs> that was my thought process behind it. <laughs> I think when I really got, when we were in Boulder, it was amazing. Get, that was a big part of my training and it wasn't to start. And now look at, I, I'm a 200 hour yoga teacher and pretty much practice yoga every day. <laughs> right? So what is, okay, so let's pull on that thread then. Yeah. So what is that? At some point you stepped into a yoga class, but it was like the thing you didn't think you were going to do. So what do you pull away from that? Like as a life lesson? That... More often than not, the things you don't want to do are the things that you should probably pursue. Mm. I think about open water swimming. I had this conversation with someone the other day. Remember in Newport, we would not do open water swimming at no, all. No, you wouldn't. It was, it was a hard line, no open water swimming. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I've gotten spit out many times, <laughs> but that's the experience. That's mm-hmm. the experience. And now one of my favorite races is an open you know, ocean swim here. It, isn't that, you know smooth, some waves at Oceanside, but I love it. I love the experience, but I wouldn't have had that approach if I didn't even give myself a chance to experience it. And so that's when we shut ourselves down because we're, we're really firm on our belief system. And a belief is just a thought we think about a lot. That's all over and over again. So if we begin to question a belief, wouldn't that open the window to other possibilities? Yeah. 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 And especially if that belief is like fearing the unknown. Well, most often it's, it involves fear. I I had this call with somebody the other day. I talked with them (laughs) about 
they said, um, they said, I think you, I'm going to quote you. You said fear comes from the same place in the brain as excitement. And I quoted that from Rich Roll, like podcast number six. Uh, he talked about it <laughs> and he was a swimmer. I can't remember his name, but he talked about the uh, fear and excitement come from the same part of the brain. And so I've really taken that to heart because if they come from the same part, couldn't you choose the moments that you feel you feel fearful that you could also side with the energy of excitement and curiosity? And so that's my theme. That's what I really want to pull on myself even more so, but I would encourage everyone listening as they enter 2024 to, to look at the moments of fear, of doubt, of um, uncertainty, and get curious about what could possibly be exciting. I've used just a very simple response to fear. I actually was doing this recently. I was outside and I could just feel almost like this, like, building anxiety in my, in my chest. I think it was hormone related because I had run out of my Shatavari herb and, uh, I don't think I'm going to run out of that again. <laughs> I just kind of lost my mind for a couple of days, but, um, I was out there with Clark and I could feel it and I haven't felt it for a long time, like years. I haven't felt that. And I just started saying to myself, but what if I was, but what if I was excited what if this was excitement for the day as the sun was rising? Like, what if this was excitement? And I started to look around. I saw like some pink in the sky and a little bit of orange coming through the trees. It was like this really pretty sunrise. And I thought, well, what if I was just in um, a delighted state of, you know, expectation for the day ahead? Like what would unfold and be curious about it? And And again, that awareness of that part that just didn't even want to go in that direction, like that part of us that like wanted to stay scared, um, really interesting piece of awareness to see that part of you. And then, uh, and then I just kind of leaned into it and it, it did, it felt much better to think about it that way. But there's this part of your mind that says like, but that's not true because you should be scared. But there was actually nothing to be feeling that way. Yeah, You're stacking up against. Other than like that shot to you better get here today. Right. <laughs> Why did we cancel Amazon Prime? <laughs> and that's not on subscribe and save. Why? Um, Byron Davis, <laughs> episode 14 of the Ritual Podcast. Byron, did, you loved that episode. That, I remember that episode had really quite, quite an impactful hmm. um, impact on, on me and, and my brain, really about the way that I think. Uh, and react. And I pulled upon that thread many times in my own life and with athletes that, you know, we really have a choice in all situations, excitement or fear, excitement or fear. Um, so get, yeah, get curious about that. Um, just don't wait for 2024, like try it right now as you're listening to this. Yeah. You had a couple questions. What were the questions? Yes. Let's dive into those, shall we? So your takeaway is See the possibility. Mine is never give up. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Jimmy Valvano was never give up. Who's Jimmy Valvano? He was a basketball coach. Really? Yeah. He created the, uh, I think he died of cancer um, and cr- created this whole um, uh, charity, I want to say, for the NCAA tournament or around that. And uh, yeah, he just was all about never give up, never give up. Mm. Yeah, pretty profound speech. We should put a link to that. All right, let's go pretty through good. the questions because... Um, All right, what kind of questions? Or, oh, yeah. what, what, or, or should what? we just have a quick touch upon that epic swell that just came into Southern California? Yeah, we can California. talk about that. Sure. It was pretty cool. I We'll talk about fear and excitement. What? The wa- Super big. Yeah, the waves were swell. super big. It I was, just It was such a magical experience to have this like whole air of this excitement, really, along the whole... I felt like it was along the whole coast of California, um, you know, from up north as far as Mavericks, all the way down, you know, to Black's Beach here in San Diego, just surfers and the swell growing. And I, I had looked at Surfline and I saw like Saturday was going to be the biggest down at Swami's Point. And I had been um, thinking about autobiography of a yogi and um, 
Paramahansa Yogananda. And then I saw that the swell was going to be really big. And I was like, I am going down there on Saturday. Like I'm going to go down there to the meditation gardens and I'm going to sit and I'm going to watch the surfers because I want to see what an 18 foot wave looks like. And I'm so glad I, I followed that calling and took the train down and got not just a great spot at the meditation gardens, but like just this premier spot where I could sit up on this little wall. And it was super private because a lot of people were watching the waves and it was just incredible to see like that like how it how we both experienced it like we were getting excited but I wasn't like oh you have to come down and see me and you have to come and see it in person like you were watching some videos on YouTube with some like local surfers were putting up and um, there was reports my brother was here and they were at Oceanside down by the pier and there was dolphins jumping out the back of like all these waves and it was just such a magical experience over this New Year, and then starting yesterday, it started to, Saturday was kind of the height of it. But it was just really cool to experience it, not as a surfer, but, you know, through the excitement and the beauty of it. I sat there for hours and uh, and watched the waves, and I was listening to, actually, I was listening to Autobiography of a Yogi while I was watching the waves, the chapter about Encinitas, and he talks about the ashram that I'm like literally like sitting on the grounds of. It was a very cool experience, but I know you experienced it a little bit differently, but you were kind of giddy over it too. Yeah, I, I was binging YouTube videos. I was on, I decided to do my long ride on Saturday, so I was on the trainer and was watching these YouTube videos of local surfers, which again, wasn't in my wheelhouse. Like I don't follow, I don't surf, I don't follow surfers, but I was watching these YouTube guys from San Diego and just their, their talk and their conversation and chatter around the waves. They were like so excited for one of the biggest days ever uh, around here. And they were just reading the waves, um, getting in there on their long boards, uh, getting thrashed, looking at people coming out of the shore with broken boards. <laughs> so many broken before boards. Before 7 a.m. So many broken boards. <laughs> it was really funny. And then to watch the dolphins, like you said, surfers like trying to avoid the dolphins, like jumping through the waves. Everybody was having a blast out there. I just felt like there was like this, there was this energy of like absolute joy. Like I could feel this energy and I people were just having, it started like, Wednesday, I was mm. teaching yoga on the beach and the waves were getting bigger. And we knew the first wave of this swell was going to hit on Thursday and the second on Saturday. And it just kept getting bigger. And people, I just loved the joy. There was so much play going on. Yeah. And for, for some, you know, two people who don't really follow surfing, I mean, we were really into it. That Mavericks too, we were watching the videos from Mavericks. 60 foot waves at Mavericks. It was just crazy. People flying in from all over the world. That was just, what an awesome way to express like life. Like I'm going to get on a plane from Portugal and I'm going to fly to Northern California and go surf these just monster waves. It was really cool. A lot of energy. Really cool. It's good. And a lot of energy in turn with the changing the year, you know, flipping over to. Yeah. Just so magical. Yeah. And 2024 is going to be a really good year. Like for everyone. No, Mm -hmm. universally, it's a good year. It's a number eight year. Um, So you guys just go for it. Like go for it. If you're going to go for it, this is a year to go for it. Go for it. You're going to have like Satya Dananda said, you got to like, you got to really want it, but go for it and you'll have all the support you need. Yeah. So what I had that story the other day I posted, like, if you, who is it? If you really, if you want to achieve something, you have to want it. You have to know what you want first. Yeah. How do you know, how do you know what you want to do or go after if you don't know what you want? Right. That's a really like profound question. And I think if you're, if you don't have an answer immediately, then you've got to get, you got to do some work there. You got to get under the surface and find out what it is that you are here for. <laughs> like, what is what is your purpose? What is your drive? How do they start doing that? I would say sit still. But what are they looking for? Clarity, stillness, but how calm. They, so how are they finding that? They're shifting awareness away from thoughts. Because so thoughts are, are the root of all suffering. So in the clear, hear. they'll start to... In the clarity, they will... It's like peeling back the onion. It literally mm-hmm. is. Our foundation, our... our baseline is calm and peace. That's our baseline, calm and peace. 
And if you don't feel that, there's, a, there's stuff on top of it. it. You don't have to look outside of you for calm and peace. You have to strip away. You don't have to do anything. But I would recommend stripping away the layers to get back to that calm and peace, which is already inside of you. So that means what is your relationship to your thoughts? <laughs> It all Calm comes back to the thoughts. and peace 101. Here he is again, back what, at the thoughts. What are you thinking about? Well, you got to question those thoughts. You have to. <laughs> I've, I've been so adamant about sharing this. Like your thoughts, they're all consuming. If you're not sifting and sorting the thoughts, you didn't put on your little sorting hat of Harry Potter uh, to get into whatever group you want to get, Gryffindor. You know what group you'd want to be. You'd be a Gryffindor. I'd be Gryffindor. Uh, but if you're not sifting and sorting the thoughts, then Let's they're constantly like, <laughs> they're all consuming and they become your beliefs and then you're stacking layer upon layer. So back to it, find peace and calm. When you have calm and, and peace, things will rise to the surface of what you're here for. Mm-hmm. What is it that you love? What is it that brings you joy? The thoughts that get in there that say, well, how am I going to make money? How am I going to pay the bills? Uh, Will I be successful? All of those things don't matter in this experience. What matters is you find out what it is you love Mm. and why are you here? Questions. Questions. Why are we here? No, we don't need to go that deep. We'll keep (laughs) this surface level. So questions. Uh, One question I got uh, today was, um, what is our take on the new year? What is our take on this January 1st resolution, uh, going after something? Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a great time of year for change. There's a lot of change in the air and you should use that to your advantage. Um, it's just like how we do our longer meditation on Christmas Eve morning, because there's a big energy of people have their minds on peace and calm and giving and love and receiving. And so there's a lot of good energy that we as yogis get to access and take advantage of for, you know, deeper meditations, longer meditations. And also through that, not just for us, we expand that into the world, um, And so same kind of thing. I think New Year's is a great, I I think everything is always changing. So to think that things aren't changing on the second or the third or the fourth, they're always changing every single second. But there's a huge wave of momentum towards change that happens and begins to get into action on January 1st. And so kind of what I talked about at the beginning of this podcast is it's easy to start today. So jump on board with that if there's something you want to change for sure. Um, And then just one day at a time, like just just one day at a time. So I think it's great. I think resolutions are great. I think I would, as far as resolutions go, a long time ago, I started focusing more on what I would do as opposed to what I wouldn't do anymore. Because to say like, oh, I'm giving this up or I'm not going to do this anymore is actually in the negative. So it would be like, I could see each year as like um, a recommitment to an enhancement of myself. Um, And I think that, um, you know, a couple of resolutions that I resolved to do and I, I am doing every day and I'll carry them into 2024 is, you know, what came, I think, at the beginning of 2021 um, was, you know, your mom's kind of legacy that she passed on to us to love without condition. That is not an easy thing when things go down in life and, you know, people are going to fall away from your life and sometimes they fall away and it's brutal, uh, the process. And you just think, my God, um, that's really intense. And then to love that, that being unconditionally, it's a huge, it's a huge ask. And so I'm going to continue with that. And then the other one was like, just to continue to, to, to live in a vibrant way. So how I eat, what I eat, the words I choose, the thoughts I choose. So, um, you know, it's, to me, it's like a recommitment of, of these two things that I'm going to continue. And, uh, I think it's a great time for change. What's your thought? I see, I see right away why wait till January 1st to make the change, you know, make it sooner. So it's already January 1st. So I guess don't wait till Monday because it's now Tuesday. Don't wait till the next Monday to make change or Friday or put something uh, to put a deadline on something of when it will change outside, you know, outside of you. Why not change today? And I, I have that conversation with 
with athletes quite often, you know, like once I get through this case or once I move or once I'm done with this job, I'll start. And I would say, let's just start today. And the same thing I was thinking about with the surfers, like these surfers that were out there, they were skilled surfers because they didn't wait until the big storm came to go out and surf the waves. They were in the ocean surfing small waves and sometimes no waves. And sometimes they would just paddle out and be with the water. And they put all this investment and time into forming a relationship with the water and, and getting skilled at understanding it. So when these big events happen, they would be able to surf them. Like they didn't just show up. The guy from Portugal didn't just show up to Mavericks and surf it. He's been doing plenty of work in the water, big waves, small waves, no waves, probably for lifetimes if you want to go that deep um, to prepare himself for, for something as big as Mavericks. So I, I treat it as, as they should just be daily resolutions. <laughs> like why are you going to wait for January 1st? That's, that's always something that um, has been my opportunity. Um, and something, they have a little more unconditional love around. Yeah, so uh, unconditional love is always. I'm glad you mentioned that. It's always something <laughs> that has been a focus since my mom um, has left us. This earth is to love uh, just without condition. So yeah. I, I I say that a lot because some people I don't believe understand what unconditional love is. If they reframe it as to loving without any condition, N- there's no condition. There's in no it. buts. Yeah, there's no buts. There's, there's zero no, but. In that relationship. It's just love, love. And yeah. I want to continue that in, in 2024. And if we're talking about personally what we're focused on, I I started a campaign a couple months ago called Be Better, like Be Better. And I'm truthful to every day, something being a little bit better. And it can be as simple as noticing that when I go in to brush my teeth and you're in front of the sink, like I don't have to, you know, lean over into your space and spit out the toothpaste. I can just go into the kitchen and use the kitchen sink. Um, is that being a little bit better? Of course it is. I'm getting a little bit more mindful of my space <laughs> and your space. Well, if you run out of things to be better about, I can give you a list. Oh, uh, of course. <laughs> That's why I haven't asked for the list. <laughs> um, but there's little moments like that, which I think we can, we can improve upon. Also, like moving your bike out that day, it was rainy and, and to, to move it in quicker, I ended up breaking apart on your bike, your rear derailleur. So again, a moment to be mindful. Okay, well, I, let's not have this happen again. What we need to do, and we just did it again a couple of days ago, just take the bike off, move the parts separately, reattach them when we get to the new space and have success. I know. And what does that, what does that demand? What does that require of us? Just slow down, slow down and don't be lazy. Like it's just lazy to not to like have to move the whole thing. It's awkward to have to move the whole thing. Cause you're not, cause we're not willing to take the skewer out. (laughs) So crazy. (laughs) It's funny, but like, it's like, Oh, I guess I guess. uh." But that's being a little but it bit was, better. It was such a it was such a uh, much better process. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, you had another question, didn't you? Having this fastest Iron Man goal out there. Oh yeah. And it can be anything. No, I think this is a good this is a good point. So we were just I was just talking to an athlete, and the athletes um, were sharing with his his wife about this fastest. Iron Man pursuit that I had. And, and it was funny because I guess she had questioned like, isn't he the one that doesn't really care about times or <laughs> destination or how fast you get there? And, and so that's a great question. It's a really good question. Really good question. Um, my relationship hasn't always been healthy with numbers and performance. And I think that is uh, why sometimes maybe that is perceived, I can understand why that's sometimes perceived as like, how could you do that? Like, how can you, how can you pro- proclaim not really attaching to numbers, but then go after your fastest Ironman, which does, which demands you go as fast as possible and focus on a number. Um, the key component or piece to that is attachment. Mm-hmm. What is your relationship to the outcome? Is your identity value, purpose, attached to the outcome of this fastest Ironman. 
and I can quickly say no and 100% believe that it is not attached to that. But that doesn't mean, and we were talking about this, it doesn't mean I'm not aware of the times, I'm not aware of the effort that's necessary, I'm, a, I'm aware of racers that are there, how many spots are there, what it's going to take numbers-wise to get me to that fastest Well, isn't that race. the technique part of it? Yeah. It's it the logical part of going after this goal, right? So you have to have that part of it. And then what's the devotion part of it for you? What's the emotional fuel for you? I know that's something mean, we might be deviating a little bit, but like no, what is fine. the what's the devotion level? Because we were just saying devotion and technique. Oh, my belief is super high that I'll be able to achieve this. And we just talked about it. What you believe I think you're is gonna be able to often. achieve it no pro- like I just don't even there's zero I have zero doubt. But here's the here's if you're listening to this. <laughs> If you, if you believe in what's happening right now, and, and then this is a sign for everything that's going to happen as I lead up to this fastest Ironman, you're, you're going to catch yourself in a tricky situation. Because in this experience, I have not been swimming. I haven't been swimming in six months or longer. Uh, I'm working through an opportunity in the body. Uh, not biking as long. Running doesn't feel fantastic. And I'm nowhere near where I was uh, if you compare me to the past. So if we focus on all of that data and information and believe that to be true, then why would I even continue to pursue trying to be my fastest at this race in just over three months? Right? Oh, yes. I I choose not to believe in those things is what I'm saying. I choose to believe in the possibility back to my, yeah. what would be my one wisdom drop for you is believe in the possibility of what will happen on race day. I, and I've also had the experience of continuing to do this time after time, bumping up against what would seemingly be not possible and continue to push through, get to the other side and have an experience without attachment. How do you, yeah, and I understand all that, but I want to dig in a little bit more of the emotional piece of it, right? So you believe you can do it. I know you believe you can do it. I believe you can do it. But what's like, do you get a little fire in there? Like, do you feel like that competitiveness coming up at all when you're doing your training and stuff? Oh, yeah, absolutely. What does that feel like? Excitement. Um, passion. Uh, and, and and pulling upon, yeah, like still being able to do this, you know, at this age, at mm-hmm. this time in my life, um, with this body that showed up, that I can still go after this. I want to, yeah, I want to prove that I can go after this uh, fast race and then I'm going to do it. Um, whether it's this time or t- next year or 10 years from now, like I'm focused on on putting in what I need to right now so that I give myself the opportunity come when I get to that starting line to have that experience. So it doesn't start like the day before the race or when I get to the start line, it starts like every day. Today is a new day. Tomorrow is a new day. And I'm going to keep meeting it and greeting it with openness and willingness to, to have, a, have an experience. So how do you think you're like from 10 years ago to now like your relationship to the data has changed. Do you feel like you were like attached to it and then you kind of had to push it away a little bit and now you're reintegrating it? Like that's kind of what it seems like to me. Like where you're not, you're not shying away from it. Like you're very much looking at the data and all of that. I feel like you've gotten stronger where you can welcome that back in. Yeah. Yeah. That's exa- it's spot on. It's a new relationship. It's a relationship to the information. The re- information has always been there. Mm-hmm. It's just my relationship to it. Yeah. But I know you love like putting together like the numbers and stuff for... For athletes. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun stuff. <laughs> I do. But also a little bit of like feeling, feeling in there, like a lot of feel actually. Yeah. Like feeling the effort, feeling the, the pace and knowing yeah. what that is. Yeah. And I think that the data is great because it just, it's this constant, like, where are you? Where are you today? Where are you today? Where are you today? Where are you today? Where are you doing? Like, is there anything you need to shift or, you know, do more of like you recognize in that first section of bike camp that you've got this, this new goal now where you're, what are you doing? You're lowering or you're raising what, what was that with your, 
raising my anaerobic threshold. You're raising your anaerobic threshold, right? So you were doing all these workouts and then you had all that data. You did like three tests in in one workout and now you're using that... um, that technique piece of it, the logical piece of it. And then you're adjusting the workouts to now do this. And then will you test, you'll test again. And I know you're documenting all of this every week on Patreon, which is awesome. Um, I think people are really enjoying it. It seems like they're really enjoying it. So it's like, you have to, to go after something like your fastest Ironman, you have to live in the world, right? You have to live in the world. Like that's the whole goal is live in the world, but not of it, like live in the world, but not have everything have such a grip and so much power over us is I think really that like that warrior type of finesse of, of how, how to live in this world. So you need all that data and the information, but then you need that devotion because that's the pure fuel that's going to push you through those, what I know, I know you've been like on the edge more than you have before in your bike workouts and you just keep going. Yeah. Well, I had a fail last week. Uh, not a fail, but I guess we call it a learning and I didn't make the first block, the first set. So I just adjusted it and completed, was able to complete the workout and when all was said and done, it was like 4% less than, than I had planned to do, but I was able to complete the workout. And so that doesn't mean, ah, oh, man, this is not going to happen. Uh, what do I do now? It's just like, that was just one day, one experience. And maybe I was fatigued. Maybe I was a little bit stressed. Maybe I didn't hydrate enough. And I'm not going to dive into all of that. I'm just chalking it up as, okay, that was an experience. Let's go. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. I had that a little bit today. You had me doing a cadence neuromuscular workout on the bike. And um, my uh, my cadence is, so it's like three, it's like four minutes at a certain cadence, three minutes at a certain cadence, two minutes, and then one minute at a certain cadence. And, um, and the power is not very high. So it's like, it's this really deep, like core workout is what I've de- experienced over those last few weeks. But anyway, I noticed that in all of them, like I felt like my, except for the last one, which I felt like I was kind of spot on, but the, I was about four, five or so like behind in, in all the levels today. I was like, that's so interesting. I'm kind of like on the lower end, of, but I was like, all right, well, that's just today. Yep. And that's, that's my, been my experience too. Yeah. Some days when I started doing that particular workout that you did today, I couldn't get over a hundred and 10 cadence for that last minute. I mean, it, just, it just was like weird. It was just like not happening. And you want to be quiet in the seat? Yeah, you want to be nice and steady. And then I was able to, the past two or three times I've done, I've been at 114, 115. It's such a, a brain, it's such a brain one. I really like that one, connecting that. It's like you really feel the neuromuscular thing happening, but you have to like pay attention to it too. But And then like you want to manage your cadence, but you don't want to have too much control because you don't want to be like tightening up. It's really good. I like that workout a lot. All right. Well, uh, I think we're keeping this one pretty short today. We just wanted to drop in and give you those, um, drops of what we would say would be our biggest things that we're going to be continuing through this year and never give up. Are we seeing the unknown as possibility? Uh, continue to follow Beach's journey to his fastest Ironman over at Patreon and um, also getting over there for the podcast that we drop a week early than, um, than we do to the public. So yeah. We, so this podcast will drop a week to Patreon before anybody publicly gets this. Yes. To, to this hear. will go on the eighth and then the fall, I think it's the 15th that will go to the, to, to everyone else on all the places you listen. What? And this is episode 400. Yes, episode 400. 400 episodes, guys. <laughs> we keep nope. showing up, I would say, eight years. Uh, this is real. This is real. We're here. We're not going anywhere. I love doing this. I don't know about you. Yeah, we've but... been doing this podcast for eight years now, which yeah. is really cool. Um, not a lot of podcasts can say that. So thanks so much for listening in. We're going to keep going. We appreciate every time you keep going with us. So reach out anytime with your questions. We're happy to smack them down here, but stay tuned for another year of amazing guests and meaningful conversations. Are you still with us? Great. I'm so glad you're here. Now you can join me for this special 10-minute breath-focused meditation for athletes. 
there is no bad time to do this meditation. But of course, if you're driving, either pull the car over or keep your eyes open and alert to what you are doing. Otherwise, take a 10-minute break from life and spend it with me training the mind and balancing the body. We'll all be better off on the other side of this short breath-focused meditation. Thanks so much for joining me. Now take these first couple of minutes just to make sure that you're comfortable. And once you find a comfortable position, just reach the top of your head up about another inch or so, so you feel more integrity through your spine. So it's just a little bit of activation, kind of an all-day pace through the spine. And really dial in this posture by noticing that sweet spot right in between ease and effort. And then just notice your body breathing. Without changing it, notice the depth and the pace of your breath. And now moving into a three-part breath. Breathing in through the low belly and then feeling it come in through your ribs and your lungs and your middle torso. And then let that breath fill all the way through the chest and maybe even bubble up into the base of your throat. And then let it come back out through those three parts, through the chest, your middle torso, and your belly pulling in at the end. Three more times. And now moving into an alternate nostril breath. Your right thumb closes off your right nostril. Breathe in through the left. Close off the left, release the right, and breathe out. In through the right. Close off the right nostril, release the left, and breathe out. In through the left. Out right. In right. Out left. In left. Out right, in right, out left. 
Release your hand down to your lap and let the breath move naturally. Now moving into a relaxing breath, we'll start with an exhale, get all the breath out. Breathe in for a count of one, two, three. Breathe out, one, two, three, four, five, six. Breathe in, one, two, three. Breathe out, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Continue on your own. Inhale for three. Exhale for six. Finish the breath that you're in. And then maintain a slow and controlled breath. Inhale and exhale of equal measure. Now keep with this equal breath and just smooth out any rough spots, any pauses. Make it one seamless stream of breath where the inhales become the exhales and the exhales become the inhales. And now release control of the breath and just let it move naturally. Notice your natural rhythm now.
Three more breaths. And then slowly when you're ready, open your eyes.